Welcome. The subject of this video is going to be a review of an H-bridge circuit that I built uh, and posted a couple of years ago with some revisions and updates. So let's get started. Here's the basic circuit I'm sure some of you will recognize. It has optocoupler inputs that isolate the microcontroller from the higher voltage motor circuit if you want to. This is shows that the motor negative, the power supply for the motor, the negative is down here, the positive is up there. You can tie them together in a common ground if you want to, which is what you have here. Either way, <coughs> excuse me, will work. Let's note the transistors, the MOSFETs that I'm using. They're connected gate to gate. You see the, how this is connected, and we'll go through how this works. Okay, let's note VGS. That's um, particularly that's the voltage between the gate and the source. You should not exceed 20 volts. So the vo motor voltage for this, without additional circuitry, is going to have to be under 20 volts. This system was really designed originally for 12 volts. All right, let's continue. This table here tells you the inputs, that is, this input and that input, versus the motor output. <coughs> if you have a low and a low end, the motor plus and minus will be low high, low, and so forth. We will walk through this, but there's a thing, two things you need to note. If I have both a low and a low input here and here, the motor will go into what is called brake mode. If you have a motor that is running, and you know there's centripetal force and forward motion in the motor, if you suddenly switch the motor leads to ground, the magnetic field and everything will stop the motor fast. If you simply switch both leads to high, you'll just turn off the motor and it'll wind down and stop. So that's how you get a braking motion, which we'll show you momentarily. Normally, with no inputs, uh, assuming low and low, Voltage through the RGS on both sides will put 12 volts on the gates of Q1 and Q3, turning them on. It essentially connects the motor leads to ground through the two MOSFETs. That's your braking motion. All right, here we go with this. This input on optocoupler 1 is going to go high. The internal NPN transistor will switch to ground. I will have zero volts here. That turns off Q1, but creates a voltage difference between the gate and source of Q2. Q2 is turned on. Low over here maintains Q3 being turned on. Thus, I create a path through Q2, current path through Q2, through the motor, through Q3 and the motor will run. I've made optocoupler 2. I've turned it on, a high going in over here and a low over here. This of course turns off Q3, turns on Q4, and Q1, as long as there's a low input over here, Q1 will remain on. I create a current path for the motor through Q4, through the motor, through Q1. The current flow in regards to the motor is the opposite direction that we had earlier, so the direction of rotation will reverse. All right, I have a high input on optocoupler 2 and a high input on optocoupler 1 turns on both optocouplers, turns off Q1 and Q3, but both Q4 
and Q2 are turned on. There's no difference in voltage across the motor, so the motor simply stops. If you go the other route, here where both these transistors are switched on, the motor is switched to low on both sides, and the and the induced vo induced voltage and current that's in the system from the magnetics helps stop the motor. Now, and there's stop. Now we're going to a condition called shoot through. It is possible, depending on component values and so forth, that when this thing transitions from 12, 0 to 12 or 12 to 0, there is a possibility that Q2 and Q1, or conversely Q4 or Q3, could be turned on uh, briefly at the same time. This is called shoot-through. You don't want this. Uh, it could create problems, uh, and some of the problems that have been reported, and I, for instance, that uh, the P channels up here get hotter than the uh, in channels at the bottom. That's because the transistors, I, particular MOSFETs I use, they have double, their uh, resist turn-on resistance is double of the in channels. That accounts for some of it. This may, I've never had problems with it, but it's a problem you need to be made aware of. It's also not a great idea in my opinion, you can pulse modulate the inputs to the optocouplers to control motor speed besides switching motor direction. I've used it, it works, um, but again there is a possibility you could end up with problems. So there's a way to solve this problem of both pulse width modulation and preventing possible shoot through. Look at this broad diagram. I have reduced the entire H-bridge circuit to this generic H-bridge. Here's your motor. And what I've done is put a solid state switch of some type into the motor. This would be the motor voltage between the power supply for the motor and the input on the H-bridge. The idea being is I would switch off the um, high end switch when I change direction then switch it back on. That will assure um, zero possibility of shoot through or similar related problems. At the same time the best way to pulse with modulate and do speed control with an H bridge is do it through the motors put something between the motor supply and the H bridge it's a lot easier to do it that way, and it works very well. Here's a, here's a circuit that I developed. Uh, it's, I'll explain more on that in a different video. But I have, uh, for instance, besides the two optocoupler inputs on the H-bridge itself, I've used another optocoupler, a... Uh, TIP120 and a 2N3055. I'll explain. And this this is cuts the power on and off to the H bridge, and I can also pulse with modulated here, and it works real well. It's been well tested, and it works. I'll cover the, how to do how to build one of these circuits in a separate video. This is another. This is again another variation of the uh, H bridge circuit. This time, let's look at some circuit variations. Again, here's Q1, Q2. This is half of the H bridge circuit that you saw. These two diodes are internal. If I'm using an IRF9660, it has 0.8 ohms. Uh, source to uh, drain to source when it's on. 
as where the IRF 630 has 0.4 ohms. So if you're drawing current th um, through these setups, the P channel will get warmer than the N channels will because that's just the way they're constructed. Another issue you might want to do is RG. You might want to switch R. You want to, might want to make RG a lot smaller. It assures that when it bleeds the voltage off the gate, it, what it does, it discharges the gate on the MOSFET, which acts like a capacitor. RG is used to discharge that capacitor effect that I'll explain in another video. And this one in nine fourteen or similar switching diode, high-speed switching diode, uh, cleans up any noise produced by the discharge. Finally, you don't need optocouplers. You can use a transistor like a 2N2222 or whatever uh, in place of the optocoupler. You enable it. Q5 cuts on. Same effect as we had before. So, that's, this is your... Uh, so this is a circuit review. I hope it was useful. Uh, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for listening.